Alright, we're watching Contact, who's been playing Ana. This is on Havana, and it is a uh, quick play. Um, kind of unusual for me. Am I seriously just the worst player in Overwatch? Over the last two weeks, I've played about 50 games of casual roll queue, um, by which I assume they mean quick play. I check the uh, the game, and the game is quick play. Uh, out of those 50 games, I've been utterly stomped in 42 of them. Yes, 42 losses out of 50. Over the last week, I've only won three games, and not just a close loss. No, we've been utterly stomped, blah, blah, blah. Uh, mathematically, I should have been in one of those good teams at some point, but it seems like day in day out, all that happens is I get stomped. Can someone please tell me, am I really just the worst Overwatch 2 player, and I'm costing my team victory every time? And if so, what the hell do I do now? I'm about to get ready to drop this game, because for those three hours a day that I play, all that happens is I get stomped, I play this game to unwind after a long day, but I just leave feel, feeling frustrated uh, and hopeless. Alright, so I booted this up. And I agree with what another commenter already said, which is this looks a lot better than I would have expected based on your description. Uh, I think the PC equivalent, I would say this is probably at least gold, probably into like low plat. I could see this being so it's like, yeah, no, I mean, like, you're, that looks pretty, pretty average. I have no idea why you're losing 84% of your games. I cannot explain that. I obviously was not in the games. <laughs> I'm not going to look at 42 games, 50 games as well. But nothing here jumps out to me like, oh yeah, I sh you deserve to lose like 80%, 90% of your games. Like, nothing here looks that bad. It looks pretty regular to me. Anyway, we're going to walk through this uh, probably fairly quickly. It's also a short game. Uh, and talk through maybe what, what, you, can, what you can do better. So for starters, uh, we're going to open a Havana. And uh, you're standing in windows. So FYI, this is a very, very common spot for people to peek, right? Um, as the attackers get out of spawn, either left door or right door, they typically are going to step out and they're immediately going to look up top. So at the beginning of a round, you need to think, hey, I don't know what the enemy lineup is. You don't know for the first 15 seconds until the scoreboard's revealed or you see them in person. So you should always think, hey, what if a widow peeks me right now? That's not something you should be thinking about all the time because usually they don't have a widow, right? Or you know there's a widow in the game. But the start of games, especially on very poke-friendly maps like Havana, you should think, if there is a widow that suddenly walks out of this door and comes out here, will I die? If the answer is yes, then you shouldn't be standing there. Now, let's say hypothetically you're standing in someplace random, right? Let's say you're standing like over here. Unlikely the widow immediately kills you. But because widows and snipers tend to stand up here, it is very, very common that the second the widow steps out, she will look up here, right, pre-aimed at high ground, which dramatically increases the chances that you'll die versus if she had to flick to look somewhere else. So I would say don't open by standing up here, certainly not scoped up here. You can like jiggle peek this a little bit. You could start over here, right? You could just like chill for a few seconds until you know what the enemy lineup is to hear what the enemy heroes are. There's like a lot of pieces of information that you can gather here. You don't want to just like hard scope here. Now, why do I mention this? So we look over here. All right, you see the Zen, you're shooting him. Okay, great. <clears throat> Kirko's gonna come out right now. One, two, and you're dead. Now, why did, I, not, why did we die? Number one, we're standing in a very obvious spot. Number two, we're not standing actually particularly near cover. And number three, you're hard scoped right now, which is going to slow down your movement speed, which makes it very easy for her to get this kill. I guarantee you, if you are not scoped, there is no way she two-shots you. Like, like, zero percent chance. It's almost impossible to two-shot somebody at that range with, without, like, an extraordinary amount of luck. But because you're not registering, hey, what are the possible threats to me, and I'm in danger, because no one's actually attacking you yet, you don't notice this Kiriko until it's too late, and you're too busy getting shot. So, for example, if you played over here, right, maybe the cover's a little better. You could potentially even play over here at this angle, not, not particularly common. You could play down here, or frankly, you could just be like, hey, look, just jiggle peek, right, and only unscope shots until I confirm, is there anybody here who could possibly kill me at that range? For example, if they're running, like, Reaper, uh, Lucio, Junkrat, Mercy, you're in no danger of dying. Like, it's literally impossible for them to kill you. But if they're running a Kiriko or other snipers, then it is possible for them to kill you, and you need to be a lot more careful. So once you die, you should assume the fight's lost. Um, not always, but I, should, I would always assume that's lost because of personal responsibility. If you die first in a fight, I would always assume my team's going to lose. If my team wins, it is by pure chance, and I obviously had nothing to do with it because I died first. You should never die first. If you're trying to, trying to win games, you should never be the person who dies first. And dying first strongly, uh, or the team that loses somebody first, very strongly correlates with that team losing the fight. And losing enough fights, you lose the game. All right, we come out again. You've lost two already, unfortunate. So you're looking at some damage in, which is great. I would note here, your grenade's on cooldown. 
Now, why is your grenade in cooldown? So the Doomfist is coming back. He's about to pick up a Mega, so that's going to give him 250 right there. Just shoot him, right? There's no need to throw this grenade. This is like three darts. You just shoot him. Throwing this grenade is unnecessary. And grenade is a long cooldown, 12 seconds. That's number one. You didn't need the grenade. Number two, grenade should almost exclusively be used against the opposing team. <laughs> Um, this is a very common mistake that Anas make, especially in lower ranks, where they throw grenades at their teammates more than they throw it at the enemy. You should almost always throw it at the enemy. Now, if you can splash a teammate with it, great, but you should almost always be throwing at the enemy with the exception of saving your life or teammate, right? That's the only times where I can be like, oh yeah, you gotta throw it to save? Fine. But not having grenade is devastating because you're actually gonna get a massive grenade opportunity right now. There are four people grouped up and you could hit them all with this nade. And arguably, you can even hit the, hit the mage here, too. Now, granted, the Kiriko's probably going to Suzu it, but so be it. Like, someone needs to force out Suzu. You still get the damage in? I think this is a phenomenal grenade opportunity. Good news is you see the Kiriko aiming at you, so you stop scoping. Uh, your team's getting picks. Great. Right? Try to go for the Zen. Yeah, this is all pretty regular. You're down a couple people, so it's definitely going to be hard to win this fight, but... Uh, you throw the grenade at the Mei. So Mei's kind of tricky, because Mei has block available, unless you've seen her use it. You actually have seen her use it. I didn't see. Oh yeah, you saw it use right here. Yeah. So with May having used block, this is a great grenade opportunity. So I really agree. Yeah, really really good grenade. If you hit her with this, she probably dies. Unfortunately, you miss, but you know, happens. No big deal. You rotate to the right, trying to help out. Yep. I try to kill May. You can't really hit her because your your is in the way. But still get it. Good. Right. I think all the play there, other than not being able to throw that initial grenade, and all that looks good. All right. So skipping forwards. So you run into one issue. Uh, that when you're shooting friendly targets, you tend to, and even enemy targets, you tend to drift forwards while you're shooting versus staying in whatever good position is. So for example, let's say hypothetically, I want to play truck, okay? And truck is a good spot. Let's say, like, I'm like very happy where I'm playing is Ana. If you see your tanks in danger, you'll start drifting forward as you're shooting, getting closer and closer and closer, and that puts you in danger and you're going to die. We're going to see it a few times this game. All right, good damage pressure here. All right, pretty much going to win this fight. Good. Everything's good, right? Nice and smooth. So, they start pushing now. So, Reaper's in right room. I would not over-index, like over-focus on the, on the Reaper because without, with rate form, there's like no way that he can die. You don't have any burst damage, so like there's no way for you to kill him. So I wouldn't be like, look, if I can poke him, I can poke him, but otherwise I would try to maintain my general visibility of the battlefield. Uh, the soldier's gonna die here in a second. Could you have saved them? Technically, yes. I think he dies pretty fast though, so I understand. I would never use sleep in this scenario. Because, again, even if you do sleep him, he probably gets woken up right away, and then you just don't get the kill. So I would save sleep, right? Sleep on long, 14-second cooldown. I don't want to be tossing sleep right now. Yep, this is all fine. Katuna gets popped. You pop Nano in response. I don't know that you need this Nano. So hopefully you're tracking numbers, right? Play numbers as in the player count slide. You have five people alive, and they only have four. Right? You would know that because you just saw the Zen die like in front of you and on the kill feed. So this is a 5 on 4 situation. I'm not feeling like I need to use Nano even though they pop Kitsune. Everyone here is also healthy. Like I can understand if like the Doom or someone was low, I can understand popping Nano. I think that makes sense. But everyone here healthy and your Yari already popping Captive Sun. She pops it first, right? That's Kitsune. Uh, let's see. Same moment. Same moment. Okay. So both of you pop it. So I understand. So like North Captive Sun situation. But... I, I don't know that I need to pop Nano right then. I want to see how this plays out because they're relatively far away from us. And without the ability to close the gap quickly and do a lot of damage, like Sigma's not a brawler, I'm not worried about losing this fight. I'm pretty sure that this Kitsune is going to do absolutely nothing. Right? Let's look at the Kitsune. So who's here? Right? You have a Sombra, and you have a Kiriko, and you have the, the Sigma. So three people, Re Reapers in right room, wraithing away low, and you would have heard the wraith as well. So I don't think there's any reason to be popping Kitsune here. If Reaper was here, I could sort of understand, especially if he was close to your tour, but like Doom can easily get out here. I don't think you need to pop this Nano. Um, yeah, so I would say probably a wasted Nano. So you get tagged by the Sigma. So one thing to think about is Sigma's 22 meter long range, right? It's actually a little more with the splash, I think it's like 24 meters. So you don't want to ever be closer than, than this to the Sigma. So I understand the Sigma is not going to stay here forever. He's eventually going to move up to this corner. So I have to think preemptively, I need to back up here to like cover or something so that I don't get hit by splash with the rest of my team. But you're going to back up there. Okay, good. Fine, fine. Right? We're, we're backing up. 
good, right? But the Sigma's walking forward. I need to keep backing up here. But I think you're worried about your Doom. That's honestly not your fault. Like, if the Doom dies this deep, it, it kind of is what it is. Like, you can't be in charge of saving your Doom this far into the back line. Yeah. So, that one I wouldn't worry about. I would step up right now. I think this is the right call. Torb dies there, unfortunate. Uh, you didn't really have an angle because your teammate's up in front of you. I don't know that would have saved them anyway. With Discord, people are dying really fast. So you need to back up right now. There's no way to win this fight without a tank. You need to back way up. See, you're slowing down right there, which is no good. You need to keep backing up. I wouldn't bother throwing that sleep. Again, super low value, right? I would wait until something else happens. All right, keeping team alive. I say your aim overall is good, right? I mean, for this level, like definitely at least gold, right? I think arguably platinum level. I could see this even being okay into like low diamond. I think it's fine. I don't think your aim is an issue at all. Like scoped or unscoped. Yeah, I noticed that you tend to prefer scoped a lot more though. So, as mentioned, let's think about drifting forwards. So what's a safe spot for Anna to be playing here? I think this corner is fine, right? This corner is fine. You could you could play over here if you don't need to see at the right side, right? You could even play over here if you do need to see right side, but you're kind of worried about being too close to them. This is fine, but let's let's watch as you drift forwards, right? So you see how you're getting further and further away from that safe spot? But there's no reason for this. Like no one is, nothing has changed about the, the battlefield that should make you think, hey, I need to step forward right now. But every meter you step closer and closer puts you in more danger. You're now in extreme danger. Like right here, you're now like potentially killable within a second and a half. So this is far too forward for where you, you wanna be, okay? stay further back, right? Make use of your range, right? Because your range is excellent and try to stay out of danger and try to keep people alive, do damage, like whatever it ends up being. But this is way too far forwards. Torb gets low. He's gonna maybe die. No, you keep him up. So you managed to back out of Flux. Very, very lucky. Uh, actually, I think LOS blocks it. Where does he pop it? Yeah, he actually messes it up, right? So the center point, it needs LOS on you. So you're actually in the Flux, but it can't see you. So, all right, tight fight. Trances pop, but you don't grenade. Reaper on top of you. He's like completely ignoring you, which is fine. He dies. So Sigma on you. Uh, you're trying to keep your Doom alive. I think this is actually a good decision. You're like focusing on keeping the Doom alive versus just like self-preservation. I think this is a good call. Um, good opportunity to sleep the Sigma, by the way. After you keep this Doom alive, you can definitely look at the sleep here. But you put some shield. Now you can 100% sleep. Yeah, good, good call. Yeah, I think these are good instincts. Yeah, I think this is fine. Right, and Sigma's gonna die here. All right, so really good hold so far. Right? Even if you end up losing the point, like you did more than enough. I mean, you should not expect to full hold the first point. So what happens there? Doom's gonna die. Yeah, Doom's gonna die again. I don't think, yeah, I don't know why he's punching in. This is nuts. Yeah, he's made a mistake. <laughs> so you're doing, your Doom is dead again. I think you need to 100% back up. Right? As soon as Doom dies, you need to back up. That's what you're trying to do. Yep. You hear this. You can sleep. Yep. Good call. Right? Right away. So Suzu gets popped. Unfortunate timing, but it's okay. I, I mean, I think it's fine. You're looking for the Nano on Visor here, which is a good call. Um, funny thing is, this is like not actually, like because LOS here is kind of tricky, I don't necessarily know that Nanoing the Soldier here is the right call versus like Nanoing the Torb, who's also in extreme danger and also tanking. I don't think it's a bad decision. I'm just saying, like, I think you you have options here besides just the soldier, right? I think obviously Nano Visor is a strong combination, but I don't know if the soldier actually has LOS to kill anybody. Yeah. See? So watch, from the moment you nano him, like he can't actually finish any kill or he gets kills the tracer here. I don't think he should have killed the tracer though. Yeah, the tracer is rewind. He should not have killed the tracer. So ah, he's able to do more than expected, right? Able to survive for a while. Does a pretty good job kiting the ride. I can't believe he's not dead. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's focus back on your play. But note, again, you're like way too far forward. It's like you kind of need to book it. The moment your doom died, you need to turn around and then just book it back to a safe corner. By the way, walking backwards slows your movement speed by 10%. So it's like faster to r run backwards, facing backwards, than it is to face forwards and walk backwards. But either way, regardless, I think still good hold, all right? But we're still contesting here. 40, 40 seconds left. Doom pops ulti. Uh, unfortunately, nobody else can stay on the cart, so you're gonna lose it, which is you know fine, right? Again, perfectly fine. 
perfectly fine hold. You should break those railings. You should definitely melee these railings to prevent uh, blocking LOS. You need the Rhine. As soon as it gets forced out, that's fine. I would not sleep that. So if you sleep, if you sleep and hit this Rhine, he does not die. Like let's say, let's say you hit the sleep dart. Does he die here? I mean, he's he's with two supports right now on the cart, in pretty good cover. There's no way he dies here. Even the Doom goes up and like shoots him in the face with pan cannon. It's not gonna kill him. So I wouldn't bother with uh, that sleep. It's all pretty regular. Okay, so this goes back to you drift forwards when when doing things in front of you. So. You're going to walk forwards right now, jump, and then fall off. This is disastrous. High ground is so strong, like especially with the Rhine there. Like, what can the Rhine? Rhine is shatter, right? So, what can the Rhine do to me if I'm sitting high ground? Nothing. Unless he double fire strikes me, I cannot die to him. But the second I'm on the ground, I'm in a ton of danger. He could shatter me. He could charge me. He could just walk up to me. Like, there's a lot of things that put you in a lot of danger. You need to be careful not to walk forwards, right? And in particular, off high ground. Have the sun pop. You're trying to follow it in, which is generally a good instinct. I would say this is a kind of a tricky scenario, but I think this, this is all fine. Dooms or Ryan's charging, so I would have looked for that sleep. I would not have gone for that. That sleep is already low value at that point because I can you can see that he's like not really like again a sleep here does not result in a kill. Think of sleeps as does it actually give me value here? This sleep gives you zero value, right? If you hit this the sleep on the right or on the echo, either one they're not going to die, and they're going to get woken right away. All right, you're trying to back up here. I think you recognize, hey, look, I'm kind of in the wrong spot. You want to already be back on high ground. If you're on high ground right now, this is an incredibly strong position. But I think you're probably also worried about your Doom dying. But, like, again, if your Doom dies that deep, there's, like, nothing you can do about it. There's no hero. I'm not Life Weaver, maybe. But there's, like, no support that can, like, reasonably save your tank. That's, like, up to your tank to not do stuff like that. All right, you grenade uh, stickies. So they pop Kitsune here. They're going to run over team. I think this is a situation where I just walk forward and let them kill me because I don't want to stagger by trying to run back and then spend 10 seconds retreating and then die because then I won't be back to the battlefield in like 35, 40 seconds, right? Because you, you got respawn time and then walk back. So I'm strongly considered right now just walking forward and letting them kill me. But are they going to let you get out? We're going to find out. Well, you are going to live. Okay. So it works out okay. Uh, tricky tricky risk-reward scenario. Um I think they probably could be more aggressive here, but you know, we'll take it. This grenade misses. I think you hit the inside, yeah, the inside seam, just splash it on the ground. You hear the Reaper, All right? You tag him right away. Yep, we're fine. You have plenty of time here. Don't panic. You have th only three people right now. You want the other two to come back from spawn. So you want to slow the fight down. Don't pop nano early right now or anything unless you're forced to. Just stay alive and wait for the two to regroup. So. Doom goes in, you're gonna pop Nano. I think this is still too early. Yeah, this is still way too early. So you're still missing some of your teammates and you didn't need to do this. Like your Doom is not actually in danger. Like even if he gets like stunned here, hypothetically, or charged, you can Nano him then. But this is this Nano is way too early. You also should not have dropped. <laughs> Again, Shatter is a real possibility. Ryan gets shard, Shatter roughly every two fights. This is now, I think, fight number four, three, three or four, definitely at least three, that you have not seen Shatter. So 100% Reinhardt's going to have Shatter in this situation. So I do not want to move anywhere where he can Shatter me. So jumping down, big mistake. Just stay on high ground, right? You can even, so as opposed to playing front of high ground, you can play back of high ground, which allows you to see more. Front of high ground may be harder to see. Back of high ground gives you a wider angle, and then you can see and, and do stuff. But dropping here, big mistake. Also, Trance is pop right now. So for the record, if you are... Let's say hypothetically you did do this nano, but and they pop trance, you could, for example, just step out here and chuck a grenade, right? And rather, you, can, you don't need to follow up. You can just step out here, chuck a grenade, or run this way and chuck a grenade. But you can't do anything right now. A grenade goes down, but doesn't hit anybody. So I think you need to just back up right now. There's no reason to be on low ground. Like trance is popped, you missed the nade. No one's gonna die here. Don't jump here. Just go back high ground, reset, right? Play here, play over here. Make their life really, really, really hard to have to deal with you. Staying in high ground here is a big mistake. Doom gets shattered. Echo dies. Doom dies. There's nothing you can do about that. So you're too far forwards. So wait, when was your last sleep? What sleep did you use? So I don't agree with this sleep dart, number one, because the Doom's charging. But even then, like this is really, really deep and they still have to trance up. I don't think the sleep dart does anything. So I would have saved the sleep dart because this would be super useful. You heard the teleport sound right there. You could walk over here and then sleep the, the Reaper, for example, or Force Wraith at least. 
but now you're in mega trouble. At this point, I think I try to retreat this way off the point because you're not going to be able to stop this. Uh, I don't know why this Ryan's not just walking forward and killing you. You heard the charge, you should turn and sleep it. You managed to get away barely. Okay, good sleep. So you need to just buy time here, right? No way you can win this without your tank. Your tank's here in a second. All right, tank's down. You throw a nade. Good nade, right? Good, well-timed. They all turn for it. You should have... Oh, you need to... You had no ammo. Unfortunate. Would have been a good time to hit the Kiriko. Tire kills one. So, another... Jump down, this is a bad idea. Just stay high ground, right? Just stay high ground. Like, the only one who can fight you here is the Kiriko. If you just stay high ground, you're so good here. <laughs> you're, yeah. Like, there's no reason for you to be pushing a full health Reinhardt like this. Right? This is you. You are frontlining right now into the whole team. Like, yeah, you died to the Zen here, but, like, anybody could have killed you here, right? The Reinhardt, the Kiriko, the Widow, anybody can kill you here. This is super, super dangerous. Like, you should never have dropped off high ground. And you should have played high ground, realized there's a Widow, then tuck in here to the left, and then play this angle, and you can heal your team, right? Do whatever you want without being exposed to the Widow. If the Widow goes all the way over to here to kill you, what are you going to do about it, right? Like, at some point, like, you just have to take that risk. But jumping in front of your team to try to fight the full health Reinhardt, not the play. We do note that there is a consistent pattern where like either your your tank is dying first or you're dying first, right? I think the only exception I can think of is when that when your soldier died to the Reaper. Uh did your Doom actually die first then? <laughs> either way, like you're having a lot of first deaths in a fight, which is generally a bad sign. Alright, you're gonna run forwards. Uh not much of a chance. Yeah, you have no chance of winning this fight. Alright, retreating. So let's 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 look at your last sleep dart. So let's let's assume it didn't hit the barrel. Let's let's assume this is a reasonable shot at the Kiriko. I don't think you need this, right? Your mercy is here. Your whole team is here. The odds of her killing you with the, uh, like double headshot is like zero. I don't think you need to worry about this at all. I think this is a bad sleep because now that you don't have sleep, when the Reaper comes in, you have no tools to deal with them. So a huge part about playing Overwatch is maintaining your tools, right, your abilities, to use for the right moments. And identifying what is the right moment can be very tricky, but a huge part of that is simply just not wasting them on extremely low-value opportunities. So that sleep on the Kiriko was not necessary, which means now you have nothing to stop this, right? And then he pops and then he kills you. And again, no first one who dies. I would also note, what is this nade? Like, is this nade going to result in a kill? I think this is more understandable. Like, anyone who's shooting a Zen, it actually could result in a kill. But, like, I don't feel like this is good. And I also know that some of my teammates are still responding. So I don't think I even play this angle. I think I've already backed up the gate here, right? Waited for my team to regroup, let my Doom take the front, and then I step up. So I think both the grenade and the sleep, but especially the sleep, I disagree with. But as a result of that, neither of those tools are available to stop. Because a nade here probably results in Reaper dying and you living. You splash it right here, Reaper takes damage, can't regen, and you and the soldier both gain health. Reaper probably dies here and you you all live, which is a massive play. But again, with no sleep and no grenade, and it's possible the Reaper knew that you didn't have those because he might have been tracking it. With no sleep and no grenade, like that was way too dangerous. All right, so trying to step forward, Doom dies. Again, nothing you can do about that. I don't, for the record, I don't think your Doom is actually that bad. I think your Doom is just making, like, kind of pushing the limits of what they can do. Because we've seen lots of good plays out of your Doom, but they're definitely staying, like, way too deep <coughs> for, for too long. And then, you know, it's, it's not working out for them. But, like, that's generally the experience that I've had with Quick Play, is that people are not playing often their strongest heroes. They're often playing something to, to play around, to have fun, to try something out, etc., etc., etc. So, I'm, at least I personally am not particularly judgmental about, like, what people are doing in quick play like the whole point of quick play is that it's supposed to be a more casual environment than competitive you expect less out of everyone as a result like in, in quick play i'm basically never trying to like win-win <laughs> you know like it's it just it's just a very different experience i'm usually just like practicing or doing something else so good job keeping their their uh mercy together here i think that sleep is not great I think it's not terrible. I think this is like one to 10 scale, or 10's the best. I'd say this is like a five. 
right? You might have hit her, right? Reasonably good shot, but like my, I already have control. My soldier has control of the angle. I'm in cover. Nobody here is injured. I don't think you use that sleep. How do we feel about this nano? Um, you get it off before. No, you don't get it off before the punch. So I think this is a bad nano, but also he misses everything. Yeah, he's trying to aim for the for the Ryan, but he misses <laughs> instead of going for the Zen. So I think it, I think the nano's okay. One to ten scale, I'll give it a six. Right? I, I don't think it, it it doesn't look like it's gonna get a ton of value, but like to be fair, the Doom is in. And he is charging his punch, and you're trying to get it off, I think, before the punch. So I understand. I think better off is to play slow, right? Because your Doom's not in actually in danger of dying. And instead of using Nano to try to get my, help my Doom get kills, use Nano only once they've committed to trying to get through the gate, and then pop it on your Soldier to kill everybody, right? Soldier or Junkrat from high ground, and then you're in really good shape. Um, I'm going to downgrade that 6 to like a 4. You try to kill his end here, which is a good call. Ugh. But I think you try way too hard. The second this happens, you need to, to like leave. <laughs> this is this is not a situation where like I can like you throw the grenade, right? Trying to get the pick. Right? One shot, it should have been immediate scope and shot, and then one more shot right there, right? If you hit the first one and hit the second one, then you would get a kill. But you miss both, fine. Done, right? Let it go and now go do something else because there's very likely something else you need to do. In this situation is paying attention to the fact that there is a Ryan here. So Ryan charges your Doom, which is not a problem because he's Nando, so he's not going to die. But it is a problem because you're on high ground and you're near him, which means you are going to get shattered. Like so. And that is fight losing. So, let's also note is that this charge... You could just turn and sleep this Ryan right now. Right? Easy, right? Turn, sleep, pow, good. But you can't sleep because you used that sleep earlier. Remember? You use that sleep on the May, which is I was like, eh, I feel like okay about this. So a very consistent pattern is that you're using your high impact abilities on very low value, low probability opportunities. And as a result, when there are much more important opportunities, you don't have them available. That's number one. Number two is if you stay high ground here, instead of playing low ground, this whole situation is different, right? If you play high ground over here, over here, for example, like you're in good shape. You're like, okay, cool. Like they're gonna shatter. Like you know, I'll keep people alive. I'll sleep. I'll nade. Like whatever's required, right? Try to keep my mercy alive, maybe. Yeah, you would have kept mercy alive if you're shooting her. 100%. She lives here, right? And then maybe she can like GA up and and stay alive longer. She also has Valk, so she'd stay alive and probably keep delay the fight for quite a while. So, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a big mistake. Okay, so resummarizing. I would say number one, biggest thing, ability cooldowns. Uh, I would say don't use them for things that you don't feel like, hey, this gives me a big advantage. Otherwise, wait, usually you only need to wait like three to five seconds and you're gonna see a much better opportunity to use them if you hold on to them. And if enemies are not using abilities because they, they're they waiting for you to use yours, that can be itself valuable. So for example, if Reaper has ulti, but he doesn't use it because he knows you asleep, I could prevent him from using ulti the whole game by not sleeping. I'm not saying you should necessarily, but like that is like a, actually in some ways a reasonable trade. Uh, that's especially if multiple enemy heroes are waiting for you to use sleep. Uh, so yeah, number one, the ability use. Number two is positioning. I think dropping from high ground, drifting too close to the front, front lining are all uh, getting you killed. Uh, and number three is I would think about the end of times. I don't think it's that big a deal. So I would just maybe like just focus on one and two. So ability usage and positioning. All right, I'm gonna stop there. Hopefully this is helpful.